So a gentleman from Frog Blanks sent me some awesome uh, birch dyed um, blanks. <laughs> I don't know what else to call them. They're blanks. This is the company, frogblanks.com. They have all different kinds of colors. And they have, um, there's different specifications on some of their glues and stuff that they use. So go check it out if you're interested in some projects. Um, they obviously make great pens. He sent me some pieces that I'm going to, as soon as I get my uh, bandsaw set up for segmenting, I will segment uh, some and use it for rims of bowls. But I had... Um, he sent me a red, white, and blue one, and I love that. And so I was testing out um, some molds to do for Captain America uh, shield, and this star I just didn't like, but um, I have this piece of red and blue star. To give you an idea how I made that, at Walmart they have these plastic cookie cutters. They're 97 cents each. First. I hot glued this to a silicone mat. I filled it up with red resin, or blue, sorry. And then I hot glued, after that was done, I put it inside, not in the cookie sheet. I popped it out of the mold. I put it inside the cookie sheet. It fit in there perfectly. Hot glued that down and then filled in around the star. So these cookie um, cutters are plastic. The resin pops right out of them really easy. I didn't spray any a mold release or anything else on them. I didn't hot glue this side down because I didn't want that extra waste that happens with that lip being in there. So I hot glued it that side down. Um, so I'd have a nice crisp clean. I may or may not have filmed making that so I will check my uh, files and see if I did and if I did I will obviously play it after this. I also um, got a flower which fits inside the circle perfectly so you can do the same thing. Um, what makes it nifty is it's rounded for you so if you wanted to stick it inside you can obviously stick it on the lathe and round it out to whatever size you want but I want to use this as an insert for the top of the box that I'm gonna make. I got this piece of maple um, sent to me from Rick Chapman. He also sent me some other blanks and this was in there as a filler, which I'm thankful for because it's a pretty nice piece of maple. So that is going to go into the lid. Also got a heart too. Anyways, that's going to go into the lid. The bottom is going to be slightly smaller. I'm going to utilize as much of this as I possibly can. So I'm going to pre-cut it only because um, I can use the scrap in castings and stuff like that because it is really awesome looking. So um, I'm going to pre-cut that. This will be hollowed out so no matter which direction I drill a hole it will be fine. Um, this is kind of the shape of the box I want to go for. So the bottom is probably a third. Well, it's like an inch less than the top. There was a cut in this piece of wood that made it to where I couldn't make both circles the same size. So it worked out that my design is the bottom is going to be smaller than the top. Now this piece needs a little bit of work. It's very um, warped. And so what I plan to do is just cut my circles out and then put them on the belt sander, which will take less time than trying to um, flatten this whole piece, either on the bandsaw or you know, even sanding it down. So that's what I plan to do is just even out um, each of it individual circle and then once I mount them on the lathe I'll flatten out the other side or however I'm going to do it. I think right now I'm going to cut out this. I'm going to cut out my top and bottom. Maybe mount them on the lathe and straighten them out. I'm not sure yet. And of course this will be done when this insert will be put in here once I get the top on the lathe. This will probably be very last because the inside dimensions are going to determine whether the out, you know, the inside dimensions of my box are. So that's the three pieces that I'm going to incorporate in my piece. 
and that's the idea I have. So now I just got to figure out the order of operations and how exactly I'm going to pull this off. So stay tuned and watch how that all happens. Howdy, everybody. I pray you had a wonderful week. So, like I said in the beginning of the video, um, these are uh, blanks made of um, dyed birch, and they have um, several different colors. You can actually custom um, order and have colors made up, which is really cool. So, if you have a specific, um, you know, project in mind with certain colors, they do that too. So, go check out their website. They have a lot of information there that. Um, is great and at the end of this video um, I also have a discount code for 15% off and that expires March 31st of 2020 so head on over there and and use that that code um, it'll like I said it'll be at the very end of the video I've had a couple of these blanks sitting around for a little bit and um, I just was really trying to think of a project I can do um, that will utilize the most of it because you know these um, blanks are very unique and and um, you don't want to waste you don't want to turn a lot of it into shavings which with this project I kind of did but I'm also going to uh, keep those shavings for a future project resin project the shavings are gorgeous and so um, that's why I'm going to set up my bandsaw to do segmenting so that way I can get the most out of, out of um, each piece and and maybe do rims of bowls or you know something along that lines. So I'm gluing the bottom part on right now um, to the main body of the piece and I'll let that sit for probably about two two or three hours. Um, came back out to start shaping it. Um, the bottom seems like there's a, a lot of meat on there but um, for one, I wanted to do a tenon on this piece so I can have a flat bottom and not have the mortise uh, hole in it. And also I wasn't quite sure um, how the proportions would look. Um, even though I drew it out, it was still, you know, it's hard to really visualize until you start working on it. And and I kind of just design as I go. It's a, it's a feeling, it's a look, it's a, you know, the proportions and how it all works out. So, um, it didn't take very long to shape it, and I'm just shear scraping to um, get a slight round curve in towards the top and towards the bottom. It cuts really nicely. It also cuts really nicely with carbide tools as well. So if you're wondering, um, I did hollow it out with a carbide. So it's great stuff, and it's really easy to cut. I also like to mention the gentleman who sent me these blanks. His name is Cliff, and his wife, Barbara, makes gorgeous quilts. Um, there's some examples of the quilts that she makes on frogblanks.com on the website. Um, if you scroll down towards the bottom, you'll be able to see um, some beautiful quilts she made. I had actually purchased one from her, and they're beautifully made. So thank you, Barbara, for those. And Hopefully you guys will be able to head over there and check her out. She also has a Facebook page as well for her quilts if you're interested in, in looking at some for gifts. They're beautiful and perfect for gifts or even just to have um, for yourself. And I'll make sure to add um, links to her Facebook page in the description below along with all the other links uh, for frog, frog blanks. The shavings coming off this piece are just so neat because they're so colorful and seeing the different, um, you know, colors as you go, that's just, I don't know, it, maybe I just get tickled a little too easy, but um, 
<laughs> that's why I have that bucket there. I'm shaving. I'm keeping all the shavings. And with the Forstner bit, um, you get much bigger ribbons, obviously, of each layer. So you can tell the difference between the colors. So I, I can't wait to um, put that in resin and, and share that project with you as well. I also thought of cutting this, um, the tops, the bottom and the lid on a slight diagonal so that a way these lines would be at a diagonal. Um, but I just didn't want to waste uh, too much so I wasn't quite sure how that turned out. But that's, you know, that's an idea if, you know, if someone decides to purchase a blank like this and and think of different unique ways um, just turning the, the bottom and the top of it at an angle so you have um, the lines kind of going different directions. There's all kinds of ideas I have. It's just um, my bandsaw has been giving me a fit here lately and I'm not quite sure what's wrong with it. So um, I'm not getting too great of cuts. If you noticed in the beginning of the video when I cut this on my round um, cutting jig, it cut it more like an egg shape. So I'm not really trusting the accuracy of it right now. So any projects that require me to have to to cut, you know, straighter lines or even, you know, decent circles. I've just kind of avoided. Now that the base is done, the body of it, it's time to work on the lid. And right now I just have it um, sitting on my chuck jaws. I don't have it attached to it anyway. Just the tailstock and the um, headstock, or the chuck I should say, are pinching two pieces of wood together. Quickly making a tenon on it. Um, I put my larger jaws on because I was um, thinking that that's how I would hold it um, while I worked on the top of the box, but I failed to make proper measurements <laughs> for those jaws. So I just switched back to my sw smaller jaws and, um, you know, you'll see how I remedied that, that problem. And of course, every time I make lids for something, um, I either get the too, too tight of a fit or too loose. <laughs> it never fails. The inside of the lid I sanded um, all the way to 400 grit and then my normal uh, finish that I normally use which is the sanding sealer then I do the abrasive paste and then the polishing wax and then OB shine juice so that's what I did on the inside So for the resin insert, I just um, put it in my large jaws to flatten out the bottom so I can turn it around and then make, you know, obviously make sure that it's uh, good and round so that way when I cut my hole I don't have any issues trying to fit it into the top of the lid. I also knew I didn't want to use the whole chunk, um, just a small disc of it um, so I'd have some leftovers maybe for another project. So 
So being I didn't measure properly and um, put a tin in for the inside of the lid, I just put it on the box, mounted the box back on, um, put it on the box. I put a piece of paper towel. You can see that's what's white in between the top lid and the, and the base. Um, just so that way it wouldn't rock around since it wasn't such a snug fit. Um, and I've done boxes like this before and just, you know, taped the lid to the box. Um, and that and that really does seem to work really well. You just have to think through the process and how you're going to finish it and um, sand it. So I end up normally having to do it this way because I always end up messing up the inside somehow to where I can't remount it or mount it the way I originally had an idea. So I just it happens. I'm tapping on it because um, of course the inside is is concaved. So I want to make sure I'm not going all the way through. If I did, it would be fine, um, but I just didn't want to have to try to figure out how to turn it back around and, you know, sand and, and finish and make the inside look nice. I would rather just have that wood there and that way I didn't have to do all that extra work. So right now I'm just cutting um, the excess off and to use that piece for a later project. And then I'm using my negative rake uh, scraper to, you know, just shape it. I wanted it to kind of have like a thicker rim of wood around the medallion because that's kind of how I, I envisioned it or around the centerpiece, but it turned out um, just fine the way it was. I sanded this all the way to uh, 400 grit and at, after 400 grit I put my DIY abrasive paste and then I used mineral oil um, instead of water because the maple that I'm using in this uh, for the insert of the lid, I didn't want the water to cause it to swell, so I went ahead and used uh, mineral oil, which I do quite often in projects that don't have stabilized wood in them that are mixed with resin, and it works out just fine. So that's what I'm squirting on it, if you're wondering. I sanded it all the way to um, a thousand grit, and then I use the Novus. Um, fine, I use both the heavy scratch remover and the fine scratch remover plastic polish. And this stuff does work fantastic. It's been a couple months since I've thrown something off the lathe, so I figured, you know, why not with this piece? <laughs> I didn't have it. Um, I just used the outer edge of the chuck jaws to mount it in there, so just be cautious if you're doing that. I really didn't want to go all the way, but it felt very secure on there. It goes to show that, you know, even if you think that it's good, it will prove to you that it's not. But there was no dents or scratches or anything, thank goodness. It landed right in my garbage can, so um, that helped. <laughs> so I'm just finishing the bottom the same way I did the rest of the piece um, with the abrasive paste, then, then the DIY paste, and the shellac. So I really hope that y'all got some really great creative ideas um, from this project. I enjoyed making it, and I'm glad it turned out. Um, the way it did because it turned out just the way I envisioned it. I pray you all have a wonderful blessed Christmas and a wonderful blessed weekend. Take care and God bless.